Very good. We're continuing in the laws, the 53 laws that are in this week's Torah portion, Parsis Mishpatim. Uh, the Torah goes into details, not really all the details, that most of it is left up for the rabbis to, uh, to determine the details. And these are explained in great length in the tractates, what's called Baba, Kama Baba Mitzia Baba Batra. Baba means the door. All the laws of damages and, um, and monetary claims are mentioned in these in that in that tractate. So the Torah goes into very, very great detail. And the reason it goes into great detail <clears throat> is because the whole world belongs to God, and God wants everything <clears throat> to be used to serve him, even money, even money, all the, the details about monetary cases. So we go. And as I said before, we're learning also from this, we're looking at the at the, the, the book, which is called <clears throat> Mitzvah, Mitzvot Hashem, the commandments of God. So we'll refer to that. Here we go. <clears throat> and remember we said before that there are four types of servants in Judaism. You can actually buy people, buy people. <clears throat> if it's a non-Jewish servant, so the servant serves forever. John Jewett serves manservant or maidservant. Then there's also a Jewish manservant and maidservant. There the laws are a little bit more exact. So it's, we're going to have some laws relating to both of them. Ready? If a person smites his servant, here it's talking about, it says that Evid Kanani, this is Rashi, so this is talking about a non-Jewish servant. O.S. Amaso, or a non-Jewish <clears throat> maidservant, <clears throat> the shavit with a staff, um, mace, and, the, and the, the servant dies. Now, once a person buys um, a non-Jewish servant, so first of all, it's to the benefit of the non-Jewish servant, because first of all, the person, you, you, can, you can make a stipulation with him. You can stipulate with the non-Jewish servant that he says, I am not going to um, be a permanent, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be a 100% non-Jewish servant. <clears throat> I want to convert. A non-Jewish servant, technically, a man that has servants, he has to circumcise those servants. A non-Jewish servant, got to circumcise them, and they, those servants then, become obligated to do a lot of the commandments. And those commandments, especially the negative commandments, the negative commandments, a non-Jewish servant is not allowed <clears throat> to eat not kosher food. Not sure why he's not, he's not a Jew. Because once he is, you buy a non-Jewish servant, unless you stipulate otherwise, unless he stipulates otherwise, then you can't keep him from that long. <clears throat> Maybe he stipulates otherwise. But generally speaking, the servant is, has to be circumcised, and he accepts on himself all of the negative commandments of Judaism. And if you free that non-Jewish servant, he becomes 100% Jew. Okay, so here, this is talking about a non-Jewish servant. If you smite, now that he's your property, though, it belongs to you. So if you hit him and he dies, then nakom yinakem, means that you will be <clears throat> also guilty of murder. And the death, <coughs> that punishment, the punishment for this particular crime is beheading. And like I said, there's four types of death according to Jewish law. And again, we have to stress it for the hundredth time, it was almost impossible to apply this law to kill someone. Death penalty was almost impossible. And nowadays, of course, the last two, over 2,000 years, there hasn't been any death penalty anyway. Even when it was in full force, it was almost impossible to apply it because it was, there were so many details that had to be present. In any case, <clears throat> if you smite that, and, and the person, if he dies, then um, the, the punishment is death. But 
it has to die immediately. In other words, he really intended to die, kill him. Or, as some opinions say, that if you didn't hit him with a stick, if you hit him with a sword or something like that, then it doesn't make any difference when he dies. If he dies, then it's punished. You're punishable by death. You're not allowed to kill your servant just because he doesn't do what you say. But it says, but if you hit him with a stick or something that you had no intention to kill him with, and he lasts for, uh, it says, yom or yomayin, which means one full day, lo yakum, then there won't be, you are not, his death will not be avenged, kikas because then it's just traded to be, you have every right to hit him. He is your, <clears throat> he is your possession. Uh, you haven't got a right to, to kill him, but if you didn't intend to kill him. If you last after one more day and you hit him with something with as a not lethal weapon, so it's supposed that you had no intention to kill him, therefore it is accidental. If two people fight, and it happens to be that by accident, one of the contestants hits the wife of the other one, she's pregnant, and her child, and she miscarries. <clears throat> but he didn't, but she doesn't die. She doesn't die. Anoshi Anesh, he gets punished. Kashir Yashisa Lav Bala Aisha, Benasan Bipulilin. Whatever the, uh, the the husband of the woman that she miscarried, whatever he, the the the, the damages that he determines, <clears throat> will the the one who damaged has to give. But where Benasan Bipulilin, it has to be given in front of judges. Alpia Dayanin. So he has to pay the value of the child, especially because he didn't intend to kill the child. The Imasonia, but if he kills the woman, then you have to give a soul in the place of a soul. <clears throat> what does it mean, a place of a soul? It says in this case, usually when it says a soul in place of a soul, it means you have to give the value of that person. That's usually what it means. But in this case, there's an argument between the rabbis. Yeshua, I mean, some people say nefesh mamish, <clears throat> that really if um, X is fighting with Y and he happens by accident to kill, he wanted to kill X, but he kills, I mean, X right, is fighting with Y. And X wanted to kill Y, but instead he killed his wife. So some people say that he's punishable by death, really. The Yeshua, I mean, mamon, that he has to give money, but not the soul. Why? Because a, a person that wants to kill one person and kills somebody else, He's exempt from death. And therefore, he has to pay the inheritors, whoever inherits this woman, in this case, it'll be your husband. He has to give him the money. Okay, complicated cases. These are only the general principles involved. These are the general principles involved, but the, the exact laws have to be determined in uh, by, by the judges, and they go according to many, many exact details, which that's what is determined in the Talmud. If you damage, you have to give an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, yad for a, a hand for a hand, a foot for a foot. What does that mean? If you put out someone's eye, then you have to give him the money, uh, the value of that eye. <clears throat> How? What do you mean? How much he would be worth if you sold him in the marketplace with an eye and without an eye? That, that missed value, also all of them, but lonatilus aver, there is no such thing in Judaism as cutting off somebody's eye because he took somebody else's eye or his ear or something like that. The way the rabbis explain in Perak Achovel. Right? If it was, then it would be, but it, I mean, there was no, no problem. I mean, uh, you know, if X took out Y's eye or knocked out his teeth, why not knock out the guy's eye? So the answer is, because what is the, 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 the victim, what does he get out of that, <laughs> right? It gets a certain sense of revenge, is better, right? The guy, uh, if his X put out Y's eye, and a person without an eye is worth a hundred thousand dollars less. So I'm sure the person would rather have his the money than they have than see the other guy's eye. Again. And it's about putting out the other person's eye. I mean, if that's what he deserves <clears throat> from Hashem, God will arrange it in such a way that he gets it. If not. Uh, burning in the place of a burning, a, a wound in place of a wound, a chabura, a, um, <clears throat> a, uh, a like a blemish in the place of a blemish. What does it have to say all these things? 
So this chabura means a blood, a, a, a wound where blood comes out. Maka sheadam means I'm sorry, where the blood does not come out. The blood, I'm sorry, it just coagulates. Like a, a, a person would give a black eye, so you have to estimate how much what is now this one a person who damages someone else has to give. Oh, let's see, where is this? Let's see, huh? A person who damages someone else has to pay five things. What does he have to pay? <clears throat> first of all, he goes to court and he has to pay five things. What does he pay? He pays, first of all, the healing. You got to take that, pay doctor's bills. Then he pays the amount of time that this person was incapacitated. He couldn't do work. All the work that he missed, he has to pay for that. Then he also felt that's called Shevet and Ripui. Then he also has to pay Boshes, shame, the embarrassment. Right? The guy has to walk around with a black eye or whatever, he's missing an eye, so he has to pay for that. And then he has to pay also the damage, the damage of, of an eye, how much a person was an eye, I mean, how much of, of uh, what a person would pay to, um, <clears throat> to with how much a person is lost because he doesn't have an eye. Right, right. So he, again, so he has to pay Shevis, uh, Boshezes, and Tsar. He also has to pay the pain, the pain that he incurred to the other person. So five things Nezik, Tsar, Ripui, Shevet, and Boshet. He has to pay him the damage that he made, the pain that he incurred, the healing that he had to doctor's bills. The time that he missed from work and the shame, he has to pay all these five things. To, so good, don't put out somebody's eye or burn somebody. Not a wise thing to do. <clears throat> right? If a person knocks out the eye of a servant or the eye of a maid servant and it's destroyed, it, it can't be it can't be replaced. It can't be replaced. Then, right, and it can't be replaced. It won't won't grow back. Shichasa. Then lechavshi shalchen atachastisha. This is also talking about a a servant, a, a non-Jewish servant. If you put out the eye or the tooth of the servant, then he goes out for free. Let's look at Rashi. Rashi says. Avet Kanani. This is talking about only a non-Jewish servant. But if a Jewish servant does not go out with Shane Ba'ayan, if you have a Jewish servant and you knock out his eye, whatever, then he does not go free. says, no, not just the eye, the eye or the tooth, but also it's called 24 tops of limbs, if you destroy them, then there's a Torah law that if you have a non-Jewish servant and you wreck one of these, the tips of the, the 24 these limbs, which I'm going to say what they are, then he goes out. What are they? Ten fingers, tips of the ten fingers, tips of the ten toes. That's already 20. Two ears, 22. Ha-chotem, the nose, Barosha Gavia, and the top of the is <clears throat> organ of procreation, then goes out. Why does it say, why does it say in the Torah? Doesn't say these 24. Why does it only say tooth and eye? She'im ne'mar ayin, because if you say eye, if, if you smite the servant's eye, if you say that alone, and don't say it about a tooth, so you might think, just like the eye, is something that a person was born with. Teeth, a person's baby doesn't have any teeth. So therefore it says, <clears throat> teeth, something that the person was not born with. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know that if you knocked out his tooth, that you have to let him out. If it just said, let the tooth, if you knock out his tooth, so you might think that the tooth of a child that it grows back, you go out. 
even at tuf. Therefore, it says, I, therefore, it says, uh, <clears throat> I, you might think only things which, which are replaceable, that the Torah says that the slave goes out, but things that aren't replaceable, not. So, therefore, it says, I, in any case, that's the law, all 24 of these limbs. If it says, if he knocks out the tooth or the if he knocks out the tooth of his servant or his maid servant, then he has to send them out because of the, <clears throat> the tooth. So I know this applies to a man servant or a maid servant, the same thing. Not only if he destroys it, but if he just even knocks it out, therefore he is, the, the slave goes free. Interesting law. Okay, now we're going to start some of the laws of <clears throat> damages from my property. If my property damages my car, gets out, <clears throat> I'm a, I don't I don't put the brakes on or something. Or if I have an ox, here, you, the laws here are talking about an ox, a goring ox, an ox. If he gores someone, if he stabs someone with this, with it, if he tramples on somebody, if he just rolls over on something, he eats somebody else's food goes into the china shop, wrecks things, <clears throat> what type of damages uh, do I have to incur because of my axe? After all, I didn't know anything, it was my axe did it. But on the other hand, axe is my property. I have to keep hearing. I have to, uh, to, to, to control my property so it doesn't go and kill people and, and wreck things. What's the law? <clears throat> so it says, if a ox gores a person or a woman, a man or a woman, umace and that man or woman dies, sokol yisokel assured. The ox, first of all, gets killed. And the, and the meat is forbidden. You can't even feed it to your dogs. But the owner of the ox is, is um, innocent. Innocent. Now, what are we talking about over here? We're talking about why? Here, here it says, I'm sorry, balant ki naki means that he is he's cleaned out. He loses totally. That's what it means. He's naki. He's cleaned out. He loses all the money. That's what the simple meaning means. That what? <clears throat> that like I just said before, the <clears throat> if this is an ox which you had no way of expecting that he was going to kill somebody. He jumped over the fence, or you had him properly watched. Or he was an ox that never gored anybody before. And so if he does gore, you, 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 you were not responsible for this. There was no way you could watch out. So therefore, you're not killed. You're not killed. So two meanings of naki means that either you're clean, you're clean you, you lose all the money of the ox. And, but on the other hand, it means that the person himself is not killed. The im shor nagachu mitmol shoshon. But if he is a goring ox, from yesterday and the day before, and this is an ox which has gored already three times, and the owners know about it, and they don't watch it properly, and it kills a man or a woman, then the ox, again, is stoned to death, and also the owners get killed. Okay, <clears throat> who kills them? After all, the owner did not really do anything with his hands. He just didn't watch the ox properly. He didn't know the ox was going to kill someone. And so one opinion says that he gets killed. The ox, but it says clearly in the Torah that the owners get killed. So it says they get killed by God. In other words, God will punish this person. Uh, you might think maybe by means of person. Talmud Loma, the test is mus yumus hamakeh If X kills someone with his hands, then he gets killed. If you kill someone intentionally, you shoot an arrow at him, it's with your own power, then you get killed. But you do not get killed because of what your ox does, even though it's your negligence. Definitely your negligence. And you certainly will definitely have to pay the penalty, but not death. Not that death is too severe. In kofer yushas alav, 
Right. If Kofi so then the judges will fine this person, put a fine on him. If the judges put a fine on him, the Natan Pidyon Nafsho, then he has to give the value of the soul Kakolasha Yashasalov, no matter what is put on him. Rashi says, Im Zetal Im Kofi Yushasalov. If you don't actually, what is it? It doesn't. You don't blame the owner, but you know, but still, nevertheless, the owner does. You don't have to the owner's life. You don't take, but you do have to take his money. Kofa, that's what it means. You, he gives money instead of him himself being killed. He has to pay the value, according to Rabbi Ishmael, and according to Rabbi Akiva, he says he has to pay the, the, his own value. So in other words, if I kill, my ox goes and kills a very poor person. So the person, I have to pay the value of this person. How much is he worth? Eh, he wasn't worth very much anyway. He wasn't able to work or anything like that. So therefore, I have to pay how much was his life worth? How much would he be sold in the marketplace for? And eh, not too much, you know, the, the $1,000. That's according to Rabbi Akiva. According to Yishmael, Rabbi Akiva says no. I have to pay according to my value of my life. If the if my it's my ox that did this killing of somebody else, then I have to pay according to my value. My value. That's what Rabbi Akiva says. Argument in the Gemara. <clears throat> if he killed a man or a woman, this is what has to be done to it. Doesn't make any difference if it's a small child, whatever it is. You might think that only older people, because it says, but no, it says even children. Also, if my ox or whatever, if because of my negligence, the person gets killed, so I have to pay the full value. In Eved if the, uh, if, the, if the, the, the ox happened to gore a non Jewish slave, then I pay 30 units of silver to the master and also the ox has to be killed because the ox is a goring ox is dangerous doesn't make any difference how much it's worth whether it's a thousand whether it's this nevertheless it's uh okay he explains how much exactly money this is Or another type of a damage, if a person opens up a, a, digs a pit in the public domain, or if a person, there was a pit, but he just made it deeper, and he doesn't cover it over, and there falls into it an ox, or a donkey, or my car, or something like that, then <clears throat> the one who dug the pit has to pay. He has to pay, and the dead Body that he's that he the of the ox or whatever it belongs to him. Who does it belong to? To him, who's him? Says Rashi to the damager. Shami mis in the veil of a notlim bedamay, or mishalim lo a mazik alea tashlumi nisko. Let's say my ox fell into this hole and it died. And I say, hey, who killed my ox? So I say, oh, that's Shmerel. He dug a hole over here. What'd you dig a hole for? I just wanted to do it. I dug a hole. He says, okay, so now you have to pay. My ox was my, my donkey that just fell in there died. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about it. You have to pay. How much you have to pay? Well, the dead donkey, dead donkey is worth 200 Dollars. When it was alive, it was worth one thousand. So you have to pay me eight hundred, and I get the dead donkey. 
that if the judges decide more, let's say it's a real case of clear negligence or whatever, or malice or forethought, it could be more, but that's the minimum that he has to pay. <clears throat> okay, another damage. If a ox rolls over, you go, if he says he pushes with his body, whether it's with his horns, whether it's his body, whether with his feet, or he bites something with his teeth, says, sure, ish, if a, um, <clears throat> the ox of a person gores an, an ox of another person, and the second ox dies, so you sell the at the shorachai, then you sell the living ox, and you divide the money, and the, also the dead ox also gets divided. What's this talking about? This is talking about an ox that never gored before in its life. <clears throat> it's called a tam. <clears throat> then, let's say, my ox is worth $200, and it killed somebody else's ox that's worth also $200. So what do we do? We divide the dead body, the dead one, and the living one. And each person has to pay half, and it comes out to be exactly the value of the dead one. But if it's a little bit less, then it's a little bit more trouble. Let's say I kill my ox, kills another ox that was worth a thousand dollars, and my ox is only worth two hundred. So we say, well, that's it. You know, I he lost the his ox is worth a thousand when it was alive. Now my ox killed it. It's only worth 500, so I have to pay him 500. But my ox is not, I only have, I can only, I only pay him from the value of my ox. And my ox is only worth 200 at the most. So therefore, that's all that I pay him. That's all. Why? Because it was an innocent ox. It was an ox that had never gored before. But if I knew that it was a goring ox, meet Mol Shilshom, and I didn't watch it, then I have to pay complete damages. And the dead body belongs to the, 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 the owner. Right? I have to pay whatever damages were done. Right? So the, I killed this person's ox. I have an ox that's worth $100. And it killed an ox that was $3,000. <clears> and my ox had gored before. I have to watch out. So I, have to, I have to pay the whole entire value of that ox. Minus the value of the dead body. In other words, the, the, the owner can take that dead body and sell it. <clears throat> okay, now we're talking about thieves. If a person steals the ox or a sheep and he slaughters it or he sells it, here we have an unusual law. I have an ox that was worth $100 and Shmerel, stole my ox, and he sold it, and we caught him. Shmerel now has to give me <clears throat> five times the value of the ox, or if it was a, a sheep, then he has to give me four times the value of the sheep. That's the law. Sheep and a special law, only sheep and oxes, Nothing, it doesn't apply to if he steals my car or anything like that. It doesn't have to pay four or five. Okay, new law. A thief breaks into my house from, digs a hole. Breaks into my house. Yimotzei aganav, right? He, he breaks into my house in the nighttime, busts open the door, digs a hole under the this, and he's coming into my house, and I catch him. V'hukav mace, and I kill the thief. Ain lo damim. I am innocent. Why? Because if someone comes into my house to steal my money, as he's probably ready to kill me as well, because it's a known principle that people do not take kindly to others stealing their money. If someone comes into my house and says, give me all your money, I'll tell him, get away from me. I worked hard for this money. What I'm going to give it to you for? And if he pulls out a gun, and I happen to have also a gun, 
So I'll say, that's not going to convince me. I'm sorry, I worked very hard for my money, and I'm not going to let you have it, the money. But I will let you have a bullet. If you insist on taking money, get out of here. If the person makes any move for his gun, then the chances are that he'll get killed. Usually when a person breaks into a house, he's, he's not uh, expecting that's going to be a confrontation like this. He's, not gonna, he's expecting that the owner is waiting for him. The owner is not going to say, okay, put up your hands. I'm a nice guy, and I want you to repent and be you know, a normal, regular citizen. Usually it doesn't work that way. Usually the owner of the house, if he has a gun, he's laying, laying in wait. And he'll let the thief, the thief comes in, he'll just let him have it. He'll just open fire. So therefore, we can suppose that if someone breaks into a house of someone, that that thief is ready to kill that person. Therefore, if the owner of the house kills him, first, he is killing a guilty man. Ain lo damim. Therefore, we do not blame him for the blood that he spills, the owner. But im zarcha shavash alav. But if the sun shines on him, what does it mean the sun shines on him? It says that it's clear. This is only a mashal, not that the sun shines. It means that if you know for sure that this person that's breaking into your house is not going to kill you, then shalem shalem. Im ein lo nimkar so then it says, you know, then it says, what's it? Then, if the sun, if the if if it's the the it's clear, that's what it means. If it's clear that this thief is not going to kill me, then if I kill him, then I am guilty. What is this case? Only one case: a father that breaks into the house of his son to steal money. If the son sees that it's his father breaking in. He has not got permission to kill him because a, son, a father will not kill a son. A father is not prepared to kill his son. Why is he breaking into the house? He needs money. Who knows why? But if his son stands against him, then the father will not kill his own son. He's not ready to kill. Everybody else, including a son, breaking into his father's house, God forbid, but that's the way it is. Psychologically, the Torah is written by the creator of the universe. The creator of the universe knows what's going on. If a son breaks into his father's house and his father kills him, the father is innocent. Because if the son broke in, it's a sign that the son is ready to kill his father. I will look at the laws. Um, I'm sorry, we, we don't, there's just so much information here. We just don't have to. This. Let's just, this is the last law. <clears throat> so it says, <inaudible> If someone steals from somebody else and the item is found in his hand, <inaudible> he didn't sell it and he didn't kill it, then he has to pay twice. That's the, the law. If you somebody steals your car, according to Judaism, Someone steals your car and you catch him with the car, then he has to pay double. He has to give you the car back and he also has to pay the value of that car. He hasn't got it, then you ha- he has to pay double the um, the value of the car. All right, I would like I would have liked to have done this. Let's see if we can just get to it in one moment over here. Just one second. <clears throat> 